Hi everyone, I'm Allison Smith. We are so happy to have you here with us from the EnergyCast studios in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Let's take a look at February's top stories. They are masters of their craft. Isotech millwrights perform repairs on machines that handle highly radioactive material. These in-house repairs are saving time, saving money, and keeping a critical project on track. See their incredible work in action. Plus, get ready to see progress in action. Crews have finished demolition on the south side of the Alpha 2 building. And stay tuned to see what comes next. And we introduce you to a group of future nuclear innovators. The state's first ever high school nuclear class is here. More on how it's preparing students to enter a field that is booming with opportunity. In-house repairs are keeping a high priority Oak Ridge project on track. Isotec is tackling the crucial job of handling uranium-233, ensuring it's processed safely for shipment disposal off-site. Machines called manipulators are the hands that make it all happen in the hot cells. By performing repairs on-site, millwrights are saving the project time and money. We take a closer look at their incredible work. Inside this Oak Ridge National Laboratory facility, there's a space dedicated to maintaining and repairing the crucial hands of the Uranium-233 Disposition Project, a state-of-the-art manipulators. We affectionately call it the Man Cave for the Manipulator Repair Facility. Isotec has assembled a team of highly skilled millwrights to repair, assemble, and install these sophisticated machines. We just have to be really, really careful um, through this whole process to make sure that we get it right. Manipulators are capable of performing intricate tasks and lifting up to 100 pounds. But these machines also require absolute precision. They're responsible for handling nuclear material, making reliability and accuracy crucial. Even minor issues can have major implications for the highest priority cleanup project at ORNL. Historically, uh, if a manipulator was, uh, was damaged or, or had something wrong with it that needed repair, we'd have to remove the manipulator and then get the outsourced agency here to, to help with the repairs. That could take two to three weeks before we could get a, a manipulator actually back in service. And for every day we don't have a manipulator, that's every day we can't process U-233 and downblend it. And now with certified millwrights in the building, turnaround time has shrunk from weeks to hours. If operations identifies that there's an issue, um, within hours we'll have that manipulator out and a spare in. So before lunch, we can have that hot cell back in operation. So four, four hours is, is a good example of turnaround time. Isotec's investment and expertise includes bringing in a German technical specialist twice to train their millwrights. They also recorded the training and translated complex manuals to create a video library for future use. I think we're pretty co uh, comfortable with it now. With 12 manipulators currently in service, this in-house skill set is critical to avoiding costly delays and keeping the project on schedule. The Senate has confirmed Chris Wright as Secretary of the U.S. Department of Energy. Before his appointment, Wright was the CEO of Liberty Energy, an oil field services firm based in Denver. The DOE has a wide-ranging portfolio from managing U.S. energy diplomacy, the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, and grants for energy technologies, while also overseeing the nuclear weapons complex. 17 national labs, and the world's largest environmental cleanup program. Wright replaces a Jennifer Granholm, who served since 2021. As Secretary Wright addressed employees on his first day on the job earlier this month. During his remarks, he highlighted the agency's impact and the importance of cleanup.
As Secretary Wright issued his first secretarial order earlier this month, outlining his priorities, you can read the full order on energy.gov. We are diving into the next big milestone as crews take down the largest structure to date at Y-12. In recent weeks, workers have made some serious headway on Alpha 2 by completing demolition on the south side of the building. Crews have been hard at work using heavy machinery to tear through two stories of the former uranium enrichment facility. Now here's where it gets exciting. The focus is shifting upward. Employees are assembling specialized equipment to tackle the towering heights of this massive structure. In March, we'll bring you exclusive video of crews taking on those impressive high reach areas. We've got more from this story on our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe to our channel for more exclusive stories. The Department of Energy has completed another land transfer at the East Tennessee Technology Park. In total, DOE has now transferred 1,800 acres to the community for new economic development. The latest transfer was a 24-acre parcel. It was previously the location of the Tosca incinerator and the massive K-1037 building. Cleanup crews cleared away those buildings in recent years. This effort is part of EM's mission to clean and transfer the remaining government-owned acreage at ETTP to the community for reuse. At Oak Ridge National Laboratory, researchers are advancing nuclear cleanup with a cutting-edge robotic system. During a recent demonstration, teams showcased key upgrades to a system that will help eliminate tasks that involve workers entering highly contaminated areas. The system will also handle radioactive materials. Operated remotely, it protects workers while supporting nuclear facility decommissioning. The successful test in a clean environment proves its potential for deployment at DOE cleanup sites. More demonstrations are scheduled this spring to advance its deployment in the field. All right, full speed ahead at the Transuranic Waste Processing Center. OREM and contractor UCOR restored full production capacity at the facility. Employees have replaced the 900-pound waste drum crusher, which plays a crucial role in processing operations. When drums arrive at the center, employees empty them to process and repackage the waste for shipment and disposal at the Waste Isolation Pilot Plant in New Mexico. Then they empty them drums are reduced in size and disposed as well. Before the replacement, workers were manually cutting down the drums, which was more time consuming and presented more risks. Workers are in the middle of a campaign to process 100 drums of cellulosic material, which is expected to be completed this year. Accentris Energy has announced it is investing $60 million in nuclear manufacturing at its facility in Oak Ridge. The funds will help lay the groundwork for a potential large-scale uranium enrichment expansion at its plant in Ohio. The company's American Centrifuge Technology is exclusively manufactured here. Centris recently secured more than $2 million in customer commitments and key awards from the DOE for Advanced Fuel, with the opportunity for much more. Additionally, they're competing for $3.4 billion in federal funding to jumpstart domestic nuclear fuel production. A Tennessee is leading the way in new nuclear energy. Governor Bill Lee announced the Tennessee Nuclear Energy Advisory Council's final report, outlining 19 recommendations to build a strong nuclear energy ecosystem. The state has already attracted major investments, including Arana USA's uranium enrichment facility in Oak Ridge and new academic programs at universities like Tennessee Tech. The report also emphasizes the importance of deploying small modular reactors at the Clinch River site, securing Tennessee's role as a national leader in clean energy. You can find the full report on TN.gov. This month's spotlight takes us to Ellen N. STEM Academy in Knoxville, where students are exploring nuclear energy. It's the first high school course of its kind in Tennessee, 
and it's preparing students for exciting careers in a region experiencing a nuclear renaissance. At Ellen and STEM Academy, high school students are getting a supercharged curriculum that can benefit the region. We've learned a lot about just nuclear energy and why light is the way it is and why particles interact the way they do. It's helped us learn a lot about our, our world and I think it's very interesting. The class led by science teacher Brooke Carter takes students deep into nuclear physics and engineering. It started with the grant that funded lab equipment and content from college level courses. What began as a trial course has grown into a fully structured class complete with lab experiments that bring theory to life. I think the labs that we've done are the most interesting. Um, so obviously all the theory is really cool, but actually getting to see the theory uh, happen like in front of you and getting to see like with the spectroscopy, um, getting to actually like understand how people or how you can determine what an element is was really, really interesting. Carter says the course is a stepping stone for students interested in East Tennessee's booming nuclear sector. Giving them a jump start on this in high school will help them in college. And if it helps them in college, they have a better chance of sticking around here because we already have some of these nuclear programs. Um, and then we also have our amazing kids going on being amazing professionals in our community. And the impact may go beyond LNN. Carter hopes to see this curriculum adopted in schools across the area, inspiring more students to pursue nuclear science. We've got some big stories planned for you next month. Construction is complete. Join us for an exclusive look at the progress, the plans, and the vision behind the K-25 Interpretive Center. We'll have that and much more. And remember, if you work in environmental management in Oak Ridge, keep us in mind if you come across a story. We're always looking for news tips and story ideas from across the reservation. We'd love to feature what matters to you right here. Email your idea to oakridgeem at orem.doe.gov. And don't forget to follow us on our social media accounts. We post this show on our YouTube channel. Plus, if you liked a topic we covered here, we often have more on it over there. You can also follow EM News on our Facebook, Instagram, and X accounts. And thank you so much for joining us. New episodes come out the last Wednesday of the month. You can watch on air or online, same places as always. We'll see you next month from the EnergyCast studio in Oak Ridge.